idea of making something with my own two hands that is dedicated to violence. Somewhere along the line, don't ask me when, from, you know, young man to old guy. Uh, just kind of bothered me. So I decided to specialize in culinary blades. I needed a creative outlet. Um, I've always had a very active imagination. And when I was a kid, I didn't really have anything to bring it out. I had model making and stuff like that, but that wasn't actually creating, that was just building. Um, the, tr the real answer is I've always been fascinated by fire and knives. And uh, this was a way to play with both. I was, uh, I was a cook at uh, Whole Foods at the time. And I, I have that grocery store slash restaurant, whatever it is, to thank for my passion. Because it really did fuel me to make a quality blade. You know, seeing the crap that, you know, people use every single day. And, you know, when I, uh, you know, was, I, I would work eight, ten hours a day. And it was just a holdover to kind of get into the shop at night and work my eight hours there. Then I go home, get five hours of sleep, and do it again. Because I switched from cooking over to a coffee house, and I actually made more at the coffee house than I did at Whole Foods. Uh, three days a week rather than full time, because tips are an amazing thing. Uh, I, I came down with the big C and went through chemo, and I was down and out for probably about a year. It was a year and a half. I was back up to full speed. Um, I lost my job at the coffee house because I have what they call a dynamic personality. Um, I'm guessing that means that uh, I think what I think and that's it. If I don't like your games and BS, then I'm going to let you know. I met a girl in the hospital and who I'm still with. Here we go. And then, bouts of me trying to get other jobs at uh, like chain coffee houses, things like that. Uh, the, uh, after her getting tired of me trying to make it in the big boy world of actually having a job working with other people, she was like, well, you've been doing this for over a decade. Why don't you just open a business sharpening? And at first I was, I was like, well, why would I do that? I'm a knife maker. And she was like, yeah, but you're a knife maker who can't pay the bills. Once again, the brilliant one comes up with the idea to go sharpen the department. Uh, I go start at the, uh, what was then the Blue Bonnet Farm farmer's market. It's not around anymore. Um, it was a uh, Sunday gig and it was, it was tea tiny. First day there, it was raining. Uh, I didn't know how to set up my tent. I didn't know where the weights went. I didn't know where to park. Uh, I barely knew my machines because they were new to me. But my first week there, my first day there, I made 150 bucks. And the feeling like 150 bucks for a week isn't all that great, but you know, after being dead broke uh, for months, you know, trying to get this thing going, you know, kick it, push it, light a fire under its ass, um, 150 bucks felt like a million. I remembered being a cook. And I remembered the blisters. Because those knives are terrible. Like, they're all sharp angles, 90 degrees, and your skin doesn't like a 90 degree angle for any period of time. I'm gonna design a chef knife that, you know, you'll still get blisters because it's eight, ten hours of cooking and repetitive motion. 
but instead of 15 minutes into the day getting a blister, you get it four hours into the day. You don't have to do it with one of my knives, but uh, if you go to uh, any place that sells custom or handmade knives, you know, look at the look at the kitchen knives, and you'll know if the person making the kitchen knives was a cook or a chef or had friends that were cooks or chefs or actually listened to their clientele uh, because you'll see that the back ends of those blades uh, don't have any sharp angles on them whatsoever. So thinking on that, um, after years of apprenticeship and mucking around, I decided to make my first set of chef knives. I made those and it was one hell of a learning experience. I revisited them about six months later. I looked at them and they were, they were thick, they were like boat anchors. That's, uh, that's a thing I did. Like they had, they had edge bevels like hatchets. I was so embarrassed. A couple of friends decided to, to buy because they wanted to support local business and uh, they really liked my designs and the fact that the knife was Damascus. And, uh, you know, once again, six months goes by and I'm like, damn. And they're like, oh no, we love them. They're great for us. We love that they're like this thick. They're acceptance of what my product was and their love of what my product was told me I was on the right path and I should, I should keep going there and reminded me that everybody's got their own taste. 